And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at a game called Asante, or as I'm calling it, Jambo 2. Now the reason I say this is because when you open up this game and you look at the components inside, they look almost identical to those that came in a great two-player game, obviously since it's in my collection, called Jambo, or Jambo. Um, this is a similar game. In fact, I would say they are about 90% equal. So equal that you can use the cards from one to the other with only very minor inconsistencies. But maybe you never played Jambo. Well, either way, this is, since I love Jambo, and this one's 90% the same, you know I'm gonna like it, but let's see how it plays. Okay, each player starts with 20 gold, and your goal is to get 60 gold. So you have to figure out over the course of the game how to get that extra 40 gold. And you're going to be doing that by buying and trading goods. As the game progresses, you're going to be storing goods in your warehouse here and selling them for a higher price. One player goes first and then turns alternate between the players. You get five action tokens. Now normally I don't use action tokens in games that provide them, but in this one I do. For some reason, there's lots of ways to get extra actions and things, so it's a good way to do them. I just give them to my opponent as I use each action. The first thing you can do on your turn, and you probably should do it, is draw a card. That costs an action. You don't have to do that, but if you, do, if you don't do it right away, the only time you can do it is at the beginning of your turn. If I don't like the card, I can discard it and draw another card, but that costs another action. So technically, I could spend all five actions by drawing five cards and keeping the last one. After drawing cards, if you have any actions left over, you can play cards. Now some of the cards that you're going to play the most are going to be good cards that are shown here. Each good card can be used either to buy those goods and put them in your warehouse or sell those goods. So for example, I could play this one, give me one fur, one cloth, and one vegetables, and I would pay five gold. I would then take those three things and put them in my warehouse. Now if I already was full up, I could replace goods. I have a maximum of six. Later on, perhaps I would use another card to get a fur and a ring and some weed. And so I put those into my thing. Later on, maybe I have this card here, which lets me sell two of the fur for six. So I would just sell these two and get six. So as you can see, as the game progresses, you are selling. And this is the main way for you to increase money. There are three other types of cards that you can play. There are people cards. People cards, you simply play from your hand and they each give you an action. Like the Hermit, you immediately end your turn and you take gold equal to the number of actions you have. Here, you count the number of wear types that you have. More than your opponent, you draw that many cards. Um, each card of these costs an action unless, like for example, the Merchant here does not cause an action, it says it on the card. Animals are played very similarly to people. The really only difference is, is that there's actually an animalist card which cancels animals, and animals often deal with your opponent. Like your opponent must decide either to skip the draw phase or the next turn, or the play cards phase. Your opponent chooses one of the artifacts that they have and gives it to you. So animal cards can be nasty. And then finally, there are artifact cards. Now artifact cards are different. Artifact cards you can play in front of you at one of these three locations here in the middle of the table. Three locations are randomly chosen from a location deck. When you play these, later on, you can use them. Usually they cost an action, but like for example, this strong box here costs two action, or three actions. You can tap them basically to do whatever the action is. So I tap this to draw two cards. Or here, reveal the top card of the holy place. That's the locations. Uh, and I can do the action on that. This costs two actions. I can trade a wear in for any other wear. Here I can trade in wares for money with the pottery. And there's lots of cool artifacts that are very powerful. They're so powerful that when you play them, the holy place location that where you play them is given to your opponent. And then a new one is placed there. The second time you place a wear at a spot, if you place it in, and replace one of your own, then you keep the location card and it's replaced. These cards can be played in your turn for no action. They're very simple actions. For example here, the mountains lets you draw a card. The Victoria Falls gives you a gold. 
But the cool thing about these are, if you have multiples of the same one, whenever you play one of them and discard it, like if I have the mountains, I can discard this one and let, it lets me draw two because I have two mountains. The second one, of course, I would only get one. And that's essentially the game. You're just going to go back and forth, trading wares, using artifacts and abilities and people to get 60 gold. First person to do that wins. All right. Well, obviously, I like the game. I mentioned that. Uh, the, I, I, I have used some of the Jambo cards in Asante. I have not used these cards in Jambo, but I'll probably always play Asante. See, the main difference in Asante and Jambo is that Asante has these holy places. This is a minor thing, but in this game and in the games, artifacts are very powerful. They're incredibly powerful. They're cool, but they're powerful. And it kind of, whenever you play a powerful artifact, which is going to help you, you give a small thing to your opponent which I think is a cool thing. And it often encourages you to replace your artifacts, to kind of refresh them to get these holy places. These are not a big thing. They're not a game changer, but there are cards that reference them. There's one that lets you do all the actions of the three holy places that are out there. That's a pretty cool thing. And so there's the cards that reference them. So they're a small, minor addition. I like them. If you've not played this before, this is the only trading game I know of that works really well with two players. Part of that is because you're trading the bank, but it's really neat because you have to sit there and think, okay, I'm going to take these three goods and these three goods, and then I'm going to sell these four. I want to get four goods of the same kind. There's just, it's, it's, it's a fascinating game. It's a game that someone who's played before will probably do better because they know what cards are in the deck. They know, for example, that if they get an animalist, perhaps they should hang on to him to block your opponent's animals. They know what artifacts are good to play now, which ones to play later. Um, but it's not that hard to get into, but it offers a depth of a game that you would not expect from something that's this small and really this easy to play. 60 gold is not doesn't take that long to get to because you'll start at 20 and go down to 5 and then back up to 25 and then down to 15. You basically go down and up and down and up and down and up to get to 60. And if you really want to, I suppose you could play to a larger sum of gold or maybe even a smaller number, although I'd be worried about how that affected play balance. The artwork for this game is great. The theme is not super strong, but it's there. It has that cool African theme about it and the idea of trading the different goods. It's, it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's just very enjoyable. I like just sitting there and, I, and I'm working against my opponent and, I, and I'm watching what they do all the time because many of the cards affect your opponent. So there's that interaction, but at the same time, that coolness of selling things, you know, buy low, sell high. So a neat game, one that I recommend everyone try out. Now the question is, do I get Jambo or Asante? Well, I don't know how in print this one is, but I would recommend getting this one because it said it's a little better. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. you please shut the door? Yeah.